What's going on, everybody, for Buffalo Fanatics? My name is Joe DeRosa, and this is episode seven of The Shout. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited to be with all of you today. I got a very good topic for this week. As you all know, this past week, the schedule for the 2018 NFL season has been announced, and I am extremely excited. I've been looking forward to this news for a while, especially when we knew that we were playing the NFC North and the AFC South. There were a lot of interesting matchups that were coming to play, so I'm really glad that we finally got the schedule to the to the name actually so before i begin today's fun little rant and today's fun q a i want you guys to do two things for me now if you're watching this right now i appreciate you tuning in please go into the comments below let me know you're here and let me know what you think of our schedule this year do you like the 2018 schedule do you like the way the matchups are set how many home games versus how many away games in different parts of the year just let me know what you think i really want to hear everyone's opinion on it I personally have my opinions on it, which I'm going to get to a little bit later. So do that for me. And the other thing I want to ask you to do is to listen to the song of the day. The link is in the title. And the song is called Will You Be Tomorrow by RX Bandits. It's a band I love very much. I've known about them for a few years. They make some great alternative rock, progressive math rock kind of style. And I think you guys would like them. So feel free to click on that link. So now we are going to get into it. And as I mentioned before, we finally have our schedule. So what do we all think of it well one thing I can certainly say is it's difficult and this isn't to undervalue the bills or to go into what I think of the team and what they're going to do this year but it's a difficult schedule especially with most of the teams on this list being playoff caliber or at least having winning records or at least giving us tough competition for example even though the Jets are on here and the Jets didn't finish with a high record we still lost to them in MetLife so it is to be noted that those games are trap games and they're tricky and you're going to see that on your schedule but really it's tough you're facing the AFC South, which had Jacksonville, who knocked us out in the playoffs. You're facing Tennessee, who made it to the divisional round and unfortunately got their butts whooped by New England, but still made it. You're facing a Houston team that's probably going to have Deshaun Watson back. You're facing Indianapolis, who, if Andrew Luck is back, is a threat. So those four teams are tough matchups, as they are. Now you go into the NFC North. And, of course, Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, we might have beaten them last time, but this time we're going to Lambeau Field early in the year. You're facing Minnesota, who came off an NFC Championship loss, has Kirk Cousins now, so they got their quarterback, and that defense is still the reincarnate of the Purple People Eaters. You have Chicago, whose defense was already very good, with an improved wide receiver corps and a chance for Mitch Trubisky to prove himself. And then you have the Lions, and the Lions are a tough team in general. They're probably going to draft heavy, and they have Matthew Stafford still. They still have a couple quality receivers. So none of these games, in the AFC South and NFC North are going to be cakewalks. And of course, you look around the division, you look at some of the other games we have. LA Chargers in Week 2. They beat us with over 50 points scored on us last year, so that's not going to be an easy game. The LA Chargers have a very good front seven and a very good secondary, so their defense is going to be a lot of trouble, especially in Week 2 when there's the possibility that an inexperienced quarterback may be playing. So there's some concern there. And then you got the game against the Ravens, our Week 1 game. And two out of three years opening up in Baltimore is not favorable. I think it's a game that's going to you know, be a tough opener. The Ravens also have a good defense. Now, Joe Flacco isn't exactly the most elite quarterback anymore. Just kidding. But now he's got Willie Sneed, and now he's got a couple of other receivers there. So it's not going to be a cakewalk in the slightest. So my goal for today is to kind of go through each week and just give my opinion of the schedule. And like I said, please feel free to chime in and let me know what you think as well. So, let's start with week one at Baltimore, where we face the Ravens at 1 p.m. Eastern. Now, as we saw uh, back in 2015, when we opened up against the Ravens, I'm sorry, 2016, when we opened up against the Ravens, didn't work well. It was a very low-scoring game. We managed to get one touchdown on them on a one-yard with Sean McCoy run, but they ultimately exposed the secondary on one of the plays, and that turned out to be the difference in the game. Now, it's unfortunate that we lost the game that way. I don't think it's going to be the same this time. Now, it's going to be – actually, let me rephrase that. I do think it's going to be the same. Don't know why I said don't. Because both teams' defenses are looking stout. Now, the Ravens, we know, have a very good secondary and have a good pass rush. The Bills have improved their pass rush in the offseason, and we know that our secondary is at least top five in the league. So I'm not expecting a high-scoring game just because because of the fact that the team's offenses are probably still trying to gel together with new weapons as the Bills are probably going to end up drafting people, possibly getting another free agent, Des Bryant. And the Ravens have new weapons as well, and Joe Flacco isn't extremely accurate, and the secondary is going to be aware of that. So I don't think it'll be a high scoring game, and I do think while it will be tough for the Bills, it is winnable. So I'm hoping that they start the year off on a high note when they go into unfamiliar territory and can hopefully pull out a win. 
Now, the next game, the home opener, which is against the Los Angeles Chargers. I got to be honest, I'm not very excited for this game. The Chargers are tough, and while while they are coming into Buffalo, last time they did it, they still took a win from us, and the Chargers are just a very tough team. I think a lot of the reason why the Chargers weren't even a playoff team last year is just because of their kicking issues. They had a lot of problems earlier in the year where they probably lost games by three points or just because of a botched field goal. Now they get a new kicker. The defense is still the same. Keenan Allen's coming off probably his best year of his career. Phillip Rivers doesn't look like he's slowing down. They have a lot of weapons, so this is going to be a huge, huge test for the new defense that the Bills have, the new pass rush, if the secondary can keep up. So I personally don't have a good feeling about that game. Now, again, I want to preface that we haven't drafted yet, and there are a lot of things that still have to happen before the season starts. I'll eat crow if these games don't go the way I expect them to, and I obviously know the team is going to either improve or decline before the season starts based on who they draft, who gets hurt. So this is just what I'm saying for right now, just to clarify. Now, week three in Minnesota against the Minnesota Vikings, and oh boy, I mean, hey. I had this exact same reaction last year when we were on the road against the Falcons. And one thing I forgot to mention before that I should mention now is that the beginning of the year is kind of wet in the fact that your team is not solidified yet. There's still communication to be learned. There's still playbooks to be understood. And that goes the same for other teams. And there is some turnover for the Vikings, but they also have an extremely new quarterback who's never played in Minnesota. And yeah, they have a dome, but he's still going to have to learn the offense and still get chemistry with his receivers. And I think that process still happens in week three. So to me, I think this is a chance to kind of get that upset on the road, just like they did to Atlanta in week, or week four of last year, where they managed to go in and just steal a win while the team was kind of struggling in the offense under Sarkeesian. They could do it this time against Minnesota. Now, do I think it's likely? Not very much so. I think Minnesota has established themselves as a contending team yet again, and it's going to be a tall task for the Bills to go to their home stadium and win. But if they could, it would be tremendous because you're proven that you could take on winning competition. I certainly hope the Bills win it, but as of right now, unless something drastic happens, I think that game is kind of a trap game for the Bills. Now, unfortunately, week four is not much better because they go to Lambeau where they play the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers, who will probably be healthy, where they got a Jimmy Graham, your Randall Cobb. That team has weapons and this would be, in my opinion, a more winnable game than the Minnesota game. Because even though Green Bay's tough, their defense isn't that great. And that can be exposed. Now, if the Bills manage to, let's say, get a young quarterback and they improve the offense in this week and cater to his interest, I think they could expose the Green Bay defense and probably sneak out a win or at least put a high-scoring game. But, again, you can never count the Packers out because even with the minimal defense, they have always found ways to get consistently winning records, consistently dominant teams just because of Aaron Rodgers. Now, he is coming off a collarbone injury, but I still think that Aaron Rodgers is going to be fine It'll be healthy, and it's going to be a tough game. This is a game that I could see the Bills kind of upsetting and winning, but ultimately I think that this is something that's going to be more of a wait and see based on how we end up drafting, how we prepare for them. Now, week six, or I'm sorry, week five versus the Tennessee Titans, we're coming back home. And now this is a game that I think is very winnable. Now the Titans are a tough team, but I also think they have some major flaws. And to me, they're a very similar team to Buffalo and just where their holes are, kind of showing that they could make the playoffs, but they couldn't really – I don't really – like, when they went up against a high-contending team, they couldn't really compete. And as you know, the Bills beat the Chiefs earlier in the year, so even though Tennessee beat them, it's obvious that the Chiefs were kind of fluky when they got into the playoffs, and then when you saw them go against New England, they lost. So I understand that this team isn't exactly the strongest team, and I think that this is a winnable game. The Bills are going to come off a tough road trip. They're going to come back into Buffalo, be energized, have a chip on their shoulder. They're going to play Marcus Mariota, who hasn't played a game in Buffalo yet, and Buffalo is not a welcoming environment for opposing quarterbacks. So I think this is a game that they could sneak out a win. Now, you do have to remember that the team did add Deion Lewis. They do have Derrick Henry. So the run defense has to be there this year to be able to contain this because it's going to be a huge issue if they can't stop them, i.e. the Alvin Kamara-Mark Ingram duo when we played the Saints in Buffalo. Just because you're in Buffalo doesn't mean your run defense gets better. Now, I think it's a winnable game. I think if they game plan and they're ready to stop Deion Lewis and Derrick Henry and keep Mariota one-dimensional, it's a good winnable game. So I'll give it to that. Now, the next week, they go to Houston. And, you know, you really want to see a long-term home stretch because in the beginning of the year, it's just brutal. Five away games in the matter of seven weeks, it's ridiculous. And, you know, you're not really seeing 
a lot of home games earlier in the year. But I'll get to that a little bit later. They move on to Houston, where they're probably going to be playing Deshaun Watson unless his knee injuries persist. And this is going to be a tough game, too. The secondary is going to have its worry in terms of deep receivers. So I'm really curious to see how McDermott and Frazier decide to game plan for a duo of Hopkins and Fuller, for maybe the occasional Braxton Miller. Either way, it's going to be a tough game. I'm not 100% sure how this one would pan out because it's really riding on Deshaun Watson, too, and if he's even healthy during this game. If he's not and they decide to roll with Tom Savage, then that changes the whole dynamic, and I think it would actually be a very winnable game for Buffalo. But right now, it's looking like the Texans game is kind of a trap game. You might be able to get that win uh, over Tennessee at home, but you're probably not going to win it in Houston unless the team really gels together and just shows that they're a force. Now, the following week, I think this is a winnable game. They play the Indianapolis Colts in Indy. Now, again, this is a quarterback-dependent game. If Andrew Luck is healthy, then it's going to be a lot harder. But this team can handle Andrew Luck. The Colts are very depleted. Their best receiver is T.Y. Hilton, and outside of that, they really don't have much else. They don't have Moncrief anymore. He's gone. So really, take everything away. Maybe a couple young receivers, but ultimately, Hilton is the one weapon where if you can shut him down, they're pretty much a one-dimensional team. I mean... Gore is not what he used to be. He played well in the snow game, but I don't think he's going to be putting up a lot of yards there. And they're just not a complete team. So I think this is a game that Buffalo can go in and win on the road and just come back to the next week with a win. And speaking of next week, Monday night primetime in Buffalo. I am so friggin' excited, you guys. I have been waiting for this for so long. A not-away game, not against, you know, in West Coast where it's late. It's going to be here in Buffalo, and I'm very excited to see it. Unfortunately... The opponent is New England. And we don't know what's going on with the Patriots right now. We don't know if Gronk's going to be in New England next year or if Brady decides to come back, although I think he's going to. But, you know, fingers crossed. It's going to be a tough game, but, you know, primetime is a different environment. There's a different feel. And even though the Bills have been choking the past few years in primetime, when you know that you have a division rival coming to your town on Monday night, it's just a different feeling. So I'm really hoping they can win this game. Again, New England is New England. We know what they've done to the Bills in the past, so I'm not going to go ahead and say I think they can win or what. That's just something that I think we'd have to see, and I hope they can upset them at home. Now we move on to the following week where the team's going to have a little more time, and they play Chicago Bears. And they are home for this game, which is very nice. I'm glad that the Bears are coming into Buffalo. This is honestly something that if they were playing away, I think would be a surefire loss. It just has trap game written all over it. But to me, Chicago is a beatable team, but they're tough. It's not going to be a cakewalk. They're not going to be a team that we could blow out. Chicago has a very stout defense, and their receiving core got a lot better. But I'm not sold on Mitchell Trubisky. I honestly don't think he's that great. But, I mean, if he can make do with Allen Robinson and Taylor Gabriel and have Jordan Howard in the backfield help him out, it could be different. But I think that this is a game that's going to be a tough team that's probably going to be, you know, struggling in the middle of the road where their defense is good, their offense is still trying to click, and the Bills can kind of expose them at home, kind of throw them off, give too much pressure to Trubisky, and I think he'll falter. I know he's just the type of quarterback to make a bad decision at some point in the game. I think that would be the difference in this game against them. Now, Week 10. We go to MetLife where we face the New York Jets. And, you know, we don't know what the Jets are going to do. We don't know who they're drafting. But one thing I do know is their defense did get better in the offseason. So we have to acknowledge that the Jets are a tough team, and they're going to play every team they face. Don't let the 4-12 and record fool you. They were a competitive team last year. They didn't hardly ever got blown out. They really proved that they can go toe-to-toe. They just couldn't close the deal on a lot of games. But this is going to be a tough game. When you're going into MetLife Stadium on an afternoon with the Jets, who knows what their offense is going to look like. But ultimately, it's going to come down to if the Bills' defense decides to show up. Now, I know the primetime game Thursday night, which I unfortunately was at, and that was not fun to be at. That primetime game where the defense got exposed, that could be seen as fluky because they didn't have a lot of rest. So going into MetLife on a nice long-term rest, you know, I'm excited to see it. I really hope the Bills can pull it out. I personally believe that this is going to be a trap game, but I'm hoping for a Bills win. Now, week, oh, and this is going to be a good one. Yeah, bye week on week 11, so get your time to rest after a division game. Have the team probably heal up, get your people back. Here you go versus the Jacksonville Jaguars at home in Buffalo. And this is so key because they gave them a good game in Jacksonville. They, you know, obviously didn't score a lot of points, but they held that offense in check. I really still think Blake Bortles is bad. And I do think that while they have all the weapons, it's going to come down to the, it's going to come down to just, you know, how Bortles plays. And in Buffalo, Bortles is not the best quarterback. So I am personally 
waiting for him to kind of choke in this week. And I honestly think this is going to sound crazy because I know that in the weeks past I've been saying, you know, trap game, and I've been saying, you know, tough teams, it's going to be a tough win. But this is a game I do see the Bills winning. I think Jacksonville coming into Buffalo is a different environment. This is the team that knocked you out in the playoffs. There's a chip on your shoulder. And there's a lot of overturn from the year prior where a lot of these guys lost in that game, and they probably want revenge. So you're going to be playing with an extra kind of gear in you at least in my opinion. And I'm a big fan of the mental aspect of the game. I believe teams know these things. They know like when a Monday night game is happening against a team that might have beaten them last year. They know when a team was talking a lot of smack in their last matchup and they want that revenge. And I think that that's what this game against Jacksonville is going to be. It's going to be Jalen Ramsey yipping. It's going to be the team responding to it. It's going to be the entirety of last year's playoff game as a revenge scheme for the Bills. So I think they're going to come out of the gates hot. I think they're going to try to put a lot of pressure on Bortles, not let him run this time. They have a lot of film on him from last year, and I think they're going to improve upon the things that they lost the last game, and they're going to try to keep the secondary limited by just keeping it short, maybe trying to expose the run defense, because Jags' run defense wasn't the best in the league. It was good, but not amazing. I don't know if it's going to be the same this upcoming year, but for me, I think this is going to actually be an upsetting game where the Bills would win it at home. Now, week 13 at Miami. Miami is probably the only team in the AFC East this year where even though they play us tough, I think we could sweep them personally. Miami's just had a lot of turnover. Tannehill's coming off a year of absence. I don't know if he's going to be fully healthy. You lose Jarvis Landry. And, I mean, the receiving core still isn't that bad because you still have Stills and you still have uh, Parker. But they haven't really come into full form yet. Landry was really a focal point as the slot receiver on that team. He's gone. I mean, Ajayi's gone. Kenyon Drake's good, but he's not in the lead back. I think this is a game that you can just win. You can just outplay the Dolphins in every way. And we usually have a good track record against Miami, save for the last year of Rex. We usually play this team very well when we have their number. I think we're going to beat Miami in this game. I don't think it's going to be an issue. So moving forward, we play the Jets again, but this time they come into Buffalo. And it's the same thing I said before. Just be aware that that defense is going to be beefed up and their offense is probably going to be energized. I know they're drafting a quarterback. So if they can just prepare for them when they come into Buffalo, if they win in that Week 10 game, then kind of analyze, see what you can improve on. If you lose, same exact thing. I know teams go into the film room, so it's going to happen. Now we move on to Week 15, Detroit Lions. And this is an oddball game, but it is a home game. And one thing I want to get in before I actually go into this game, there are three out of four home – or I'm sorry, three home games in the last four weeks – for Buffalo. And that's huge. Because if this team does happen to go 11-5, like Tina McQuarrie said, or if at least they're on pace to, it's going to be a lot more beneficial for their playoff chances if they have three home games. You want to be in front of your home crowd. I know that for the past two years, they haven't finished in Buffalo, and they're finally going to do that, where they play the Dolphins in Week 17. I think even though you have to face that brutal road schedule in the beginning of the year, it's good to get that all out of the way and face some of your toughest teams early on because then you can just get through the second half, know that you're going back to Buffalo, and you just have that in your pocket. You know that it's going to be coming. And that makes a huge difference if you're going for playoff chances. I mean, you want to be there. You want to be home and you want to win in front of your fans, there's a different energy, a different feel. And I mean, even though the team did manage to go to the playoffs in Miami, that's because that Miami team kind of stopped caring. Imagine having that energy at home. And I think that's huge, and I think it's very important for this team that wants to get back to the playoffs and prove themselves. And, you know, they're hungry. They got a new defense. They're going to have a lot of new weapons. So what better way to close out the season than in front of your own fans? So... Against Detroit, they're coming into Buffalo. We beat them a couple years back when we had our solid defense back in the Schwartz era for the defensive coordinator and back in Marone. Now, it's different now, uh, different these days because roster turnover. But the Lions, in my opinion, aren't, like, too threatening. Matthew Stafford's a great quarterback. But, you know, outside of Galladay and outside of Abdullah, I really just – I don't see – too much of a threat with this team. I mean, our Eric Ebron's not even there anymore like he was anything. Detroit's a good team, but I don't think that this is going to be a game where we should expect, you know, a loss. I think the Bills can really just pull it out. And, I mean, again, it's all preliminary. I'm talking solely from the point of what we have right now. There's still a lot to be done for the Bills, still a lot to be done for every single one of these teams. But I think the game against Detroit is very winnable. Ultimately, it comes down to if you can pressure Stafford enough to just get him to throw a lot of interceptions, which I think they can do. The pass rush is looking good on paper, but they'll have to perform. Now, going Week 16 at Patriots, just give it an L. I mean, you know, at this point, unless Tom Brady's not playing or unless the teams, we just know that they don't win in Foxborough if there's anything on the line for the Patriots. So I'm not even going to bother. I think it's a loss for them. Maybe they can give up a good game. Maybe Kelvin Benjamin won't get screwed over on a reception anymore. But either way, this is just going to be a loss. I wouldn't get my hopes up for it. If they win, 
fantastic. I'm never rooting against the Bills. I'm just trying to be realistic. Week 17 versus the Dolphins in Buffalo. I think it's a win. I think at this point in the year, even if the either team has playoff chances on the line, the Bills are just the better team on paper right now, and I think that they're going to be able to beat the Dolphins at home. So that's my opinion. Now, obviously, everything I said is just my opinion, and it's subject to change. Roster turnover is going to happen. So if you are watching this, feel free to comment and let me know what you think. Let's keep it civil. I'm having a good time here, and I'm going to read some of your comments. So Eric says, looks tough to me. Yes, absolutely. It's like I said before, the NFC North and the AFC South are tough divisions, and both of the teams we're playing from the West and from the uh, North are just you know, tough teams. The Ravens, the Chargers, the two teams that we beat out for the playoffs are going to be there in the first two weeks of the seasons. And I think that's crazy scheduling, but I'm excited. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch these games against teams that are fairly, you know, close matchups with the Bills. You know, the Ravens don't have the best offense in the world, but they have a stout defense, and I really want to see it. And then for the Chargers, they have a fantastic offense, in my opinion, when healthy. If their kicking game was fine, that team would have been probably the wet, the winners of the West, given how Kansas City slumped last year. So that's going to be a tough game, but I'm glad we're playing them at home. I don't think it's going to be a win personally unless the Bills do something drastic, but Ultimately, yeah, this is a very tough schedule. So this is the proving ground for a team that just made the playoffs. Are you going to regress or are you going to get better? How is your team going to handle the fact that you're going up against such tough competition and the analysts are probably going to pick you to lose most of these games? I mean, someone already had the Bills going, what, 2-14? and 14? And, I mean, it's way too early to say it, like it's way too early to do this live about the schedule, but people are already underestimating it. So it's a tough schedule, but let's see how the team responds to it. Buffalo will go 11-5. and five. <laughs> I hope, like, I, I definitely hope. I would love it if they did, but I, at this point, I do not know if they're going to uh, go 11-5. and five. I honestly think it's really likely that they would go 9-7 and seven again. But, I mean, if this defense, if the pass rush improvement turns out to be, you know, as stout as we're hoping it could be, then – I don't see why not. I mean, all that would mean is that the offense has to at least be decent for this team to really go for the hump of nine or ten wins. So is it possible? I mean, anything's possible in football. You never know. 11-5 and five would probably be my highest, but I think 9-7 and seven is probably the fair pick right now. I think it's where, you know, there's going to be a lot of close games, and, you know, it's going to rely a lot on that one play that usually messes up the <laughs> – messes over the bills isn't going to mess us up this time. So I hate the phrase trap game. You know what? I, you can disagree, but personally, I really do think a trap game does exist. I think there is that one game on your schedule where, you know, maybe you underestimate the team, maybe you go into foreign territory, maybe they come to you, but ultimately a bad team just decides to play up, and you see it happen week by week. And I am a believer that anything can happen in football. Anything can happen from every single week. Like, I mean, look at last year. You had the Carolina Panthers and the Chicago Bears. The Panthers go into Chicago, and Chicago beats them. But yet Chicago finished with a bad record, and the Panthers go to the playoffs, but they lose to the Saints. And I think that speaks volumes for that idea. I think a trap game does exist. I don't think a team expects it to be a trap game, but ultimately these teams that might have lower records might come to play that day, and you might not be prepared for it. And I mean, a lot of people consider that game in 2014 where the Bills beat the Packers a trap game because the Packers really think – you know, being Super Bowl contending that they were going to lose in Buffalo. And a lot of people didn't think they would. Every projection I saw said they were going to lose. So I think trap game exists. You don't have to agree with it. It's totally your opinion. But for me, I think it's a more than legitimate thing. Sometimes these bad teams just want to take out the good teams. Let's see. Good job, bro. Should be a good season. Let's go, Buffalo. Thank you, Joseph. I appreciate that. Great name. Just beat the Pats and Jets. Chris, I, I wish. You know, if they could... If they could sweep both of these teams, this team could go 16-0. I'm surely hoping so. And, I mean, again, a lot of it has to do with the turnover of the rosters. If the Patriots lose Gronk, that's a huge weapon loss. They're still going to be extremely tough, but that makes them a little more beatable. If Brady decides he doesn't want to play anymore, which I don't think he's going to, I think he's going to come back for at least one more year. He is, you know, if he decides not to come back, that's a different team. It's a different New England. And then we're talking, like, maybe a 90s era where it's a more winnable game. But, you know... As much as I want this to happen, I have to be realistic when it comes to projecting a roster, and I just don't think that New England is, you know, done being New England yet. Their dynasty isn't over yet. You know, maybe we're starting to see the end stages of the era of Brady and Belichick, and that's to be expected, but I still think they got one, maybe two more years of being a good maybe Super Bowl contending team. We can't discredit Tom Brady, and I'm sorry. I know you guys don't want to hear this, but you have to accept that they are a tough team. They're going to, you know, they're going to give us a ride. And it's, you know, I, in my opinion, I think it's more honorable if the Bills beat them now than when they lose Brady or when they lose Gronk. So I hope they can beat the Pats and the Jets. Wishful thinking. At this point, 
depending on the roster, if the Pats stay the same the way they are now, I don't think it's going to happen. I hope I'm wrong. It was USA Today that said we are going 2-14, and 14, which had us going 2-14 last year, too. Yeah, that's a lot of disrespect, Ken. I can't believe that. It must have been a great feeling. I, I knew that there were certain people projecting them to go like 4-12, and 3-13. I honestly didn't have high expectations last year. And you guys should understand something. I'm usually an optimistic guy outside of football. When it comes to the Bills, I'm very pessimistic. And that's just because I've been let down so many times that it's to be expected. I kind of come into a season with low expectations because the last time – Excuse me, I had high expectations. They ended up going seven and nine, and we don't want to see that. Or I'm sorry, eight and eight. You have to be realistic when it comes to this team. This team has proven that while they have made the playoffs this past year, they have a lot of holes, and that's to be, you know, a lot of different things on their team aren't filled yet. Who's going to be the quarterback? What's going on with the receivers? What's going on with the deal? There's a lot of issues. So that to me is why we get projected so low. Now, I don't think this team's going two and 14. I still think they have plenty of talent, enough talent to at least get them six, seven wins. How they get those possible next three wins or how they lose those next three games is really just to be decided by the roster turnover that they have. And I don't think they're a two and 14 team, but right now I could see why there's ambiguity in this team going back to the playoffs or winning the division. Hi, Kenneth. Very nice to see you. And it's any given Sunday, so all games are trap games. It's fair. But, I mean, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to budge on this opinion. I, I really don't. I've just been – you see, I come from a house where my family's Giants fans. My father is a diehard Giant fan, and he is also very suspicious when it comes to the Giants. So I've heard the term trap game thrown around for – years it's becoming grand in me so you know that superstition comes into me and that idea of a team just you know you know a game just being a trap game you fly into a place and coming out with a loss is just very real to me and it is any given sunday it's football we all know that but i do think the idea of a trap game still exists so that's just my personal opinion but yes if anyone was actually wondering my entire family are new york giants fans i am the only buffalo bills fan and my origin story is a little weird because i chose the bills over the Giants, over the Jets, over the Patriots, Steelers, everybody. I wanted to root for the Buffalo Bills because I felt like in my area, because I'm from Poughkeepsie originally, they don't get a lot of love, and I wanted to show them some love. So speaking of that, I started rooting for the Bills, and that's why I'm pessimistic, unfortunately. They haven't given me a lot of reason to cheer over the past few years. The playoffs were one of the best moments I've ever seen from this team, so it was very nice. So it looks like you guys aren't really giving me any more comments to work with, so I want to wrap up today's program. I'm glad you could all join me today. Let me know, you know, in the future, if you want to DM me or if you want to say anything, what you thought of this video and what you think of the schedule because, you know, the year's coming along. And I'm really excited to see what this team could do if they could face the adversity and end up winning these tough road games, if they can face these tough contending teams and come out with a win. But that's to be decided. The draft is this Thursday, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you'll be there. And if the Buffalo Bills draft Josh Rosen, I'm coming in here with a Josh Rosen picture, and I'm going to brag to everyone because that is my number one quarterback prospect. So stay safe out there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to The Shout. I will have this podcast and last week's uploaded by the end of today. Want to apologize for forgetting to do that last week. I had problems with the audio file and couldn't fix it till the weekend. We're good now. All of those will be on my Shout Engine page. You all stay beautiful, and I will see you very soon. Let's go, Buffalo. This awkward pause because I forget that you have to click two buttons to end the video. Now I'm ending. Peace.